In Nigeria as it is now, if you don't have money, you cannot get justice. Even if you go to some of these NGOs, most of the NGOs don't take up your cases unless they are cases that will give them uh, mileage. Oh, you rapes, uh, man rapes child in Lagos. Oh, man rapes daughter in Lagos. But there are other cases that they can also help with, but they will not. They will turn you down. And even for us as private practitioners, sometimes when we take up these cases pro bono, I mean free of charge, along the line we get this curry with all unnecessary bureaucracies. Adjournment today, adjournment tomorrow. And I mean for each of the adjournments, you are you are burning time, you are burning fuel, you are burning expectations. Imagine you leaving your house as early as 5 o'clock to get to the court in the morning only for you to be told that the court will not be sitting. But of course, it's on the minimum scale. Because in Lagos now, most of the courts are on WhatsApp and they give you updates about the activities of their court. For a good number of them, if the court will not be sitting, they will inform you via that WhatsApp platform that the court will not be sitting. But not all the courts. So, for me, there's room for improvement, and I know that the coming government is a government of educated people. Let me tell you something. Unless you are very educated and street smart, you cannot run Nigeria. And that's why Ibita Obi can never, can never ever run Nigeria. He doesn't have the wits, doesn't have the acumen to run Nigeria. Nigeria is like a, a child suffering from Kwashoko. No matter the amount of fried rice and jollof rice you feed to a child who is kwashoko, it will not be normal overnight. You need to apply that fried rice with caution. In fact, if you apply the fried rice without caution, the child may even die. You have to do everything moderatio e omnia. You have to go bit by bit. With our this style of government, the one is, I mean, is pushing around will destroy Nigeria. This is a very corrupt country. Terribly corrupt country. Nigerians, all of us, we are corrupt. Every Nigerian of a working class age is using a bit of age. You will never see the date of death. All of them have two, three, four, five. About 80% of Nigerians carrying driver's license did not go for any driving tests. 80% carrying Pintana passport only go there to capture. They never fill the form themselves. Somebody fill it out of them. 80% of people who are married in Nigeria under the Marriage Act are not properly married. You just go to the marriage registry, they will ask you there, do you want to marry now now or you want to come back? Whereas the law says people who want to marry should be published for a period of time so that if there is someone who thinks that this marriage should not be conducted, the person has the opportunity. Oh, this man who oh, is married to somebody else, don't, marry, don't let him get married again. Or oh, there's no publication. Or oh, there is somehow just make it up when you go to this register one tell you you want to marry now i want to marry tomorrow what does that mean and the affidavit of status that you're supposed to do you just pay for it. somebody you just drop your passport somebody will do it for you so all of us are corrupt not because nigeria we think corruption means to be stealing government money i'm speaking in the, in the generic sense corrupt means not to do things according to law in order to give yourself an advantage. So, a lot of us need also to change. I mean, we, are, we need a lot of uh, reorientation in the country. You know, because without us complying with the law, there is no way Nigeria can be developed. No way. No magic. The same Nigerians who don't obey law in Nigeria, they go abroad and they will be law. Without being told, they will be law. The traffic law that you see, I mean, the, the, the traffic log jam you see everywhere, 
is because we are not obeying the roads are bad and they are being reconstructed. I know. But when you go through these traffic log jams, you will end up finding now that the reason is because some terrible guys are not obeying the law. Sometimes they are driving against the run of traffic. Nobody arrests them. They blackmail the system. The system blackmails them. I don't arrest them at uh, election. They will vote for us. Then after the election, we leave them because they will think that we are coming for them. You have to just draw the slacks. I remember Fatula in Lagos State. He doesn't care if you don't vote for him. He was enforcing the law accordingly. What happened to that enforcement uh, regime is dead because of the truth. The recruitment policy in the last month, for example, has changed. You find more, more people who ordinarily should not be wearing any public uniform, not even a Boy Scout uniform, wearing last month. They can't speak well. They cannot talk to you. They, in fact, if you argue with them, they want to punch you. They jump into your car in order to arrest you. Whereas well, they have camera everywhere. You don't have to jump to the police car. So when you employ people who are more or less like talks, just to get political advantage, the law will not be enforced. So we need to draw the slack in the area of enforcement. And we also, as citizens, need to purge ourselves and apply ourselves to law by behaving according. We should not behave according to law because we are scared. A society where people are scared, a society where people obey the law because they are scared, is a terrible society. People should obey the law because it is good to obey the law. When you obey the law because you are afraid or because of the consequence of not obeying the law, that's not a good law. But it means once the element of fear, e.g. police, army, whoever is arrested again, once those elements are off, you are likely going to what? Violate the law. No, that shouldn't be the narrative. We should obey law because it is good. There is so much wisdom in obeying the law. And that is how you build a wonderful society. And I know with the Tinubu in government, all of these things will change because Tinubu is bringing a professional approach into government. For the first time, for the first time since independence, we are having someone who has a native understanding of the Nigerian society. Native. There's a way a Nigerian does, some, does things. You have to systematically change that method of doing things. If you don't, you are going to lose. And that's the rule for you. Thank you.